Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth here at Board Game Barrister, and today we're spending a little time outside the store to work on a DIY project. I'm going to make one of these simple self-lined flat bottom dice bags, and you can make one too. This is a really great sewing project for beginners because you can get a really nice finished look with only cutting and sewing just a few straight lines. For this project, you'll need a couple of basic tools, an iron and ironing board, four pieces of 8.5 by 11 paper, a washable marker, chalk, or pencil depending on the color of your fabric, fabric scissors or just your sharpest pair of scissors, a ruler, pins, thread, one safety pin, and a sewing needle. I'll be using my sewing machine but you can also do this whole project by hand with a needle and thread in about two hours. If you're doing it by hand, I recommend using a backstitch. For our material, we're using a basic 100% cotton fabric, such as a quilter's cotton. You'll need two-thirds of a yard of fabric. So here I've got this Curiosity Shop fabric that I've picked out. And this fabric definitely has a one-way design. There's only really one right side up to look at the pattern on this fabric. So two-thirds of a yard will give us enough material to work with to show off that pattern nicely. You'll also need two pieces of ribbon or cord at 30 inches each. The one thing you want to do in advance is wash and dry your fabric just to make sure it's pre-shrunk before you begin. This one has already been washed, so we are ready to get started. The first thing we're going to do is iron the fabric really well before tracing our pattern. We're going to trace and cut two long rectangles. So if you put two pieces of paper end to end like this, it'll make one long rectangle. So this will be our first piece. And this will be our second piece. If the design on your fabric needs to point a certain way, put the fabric right side up and then make sure your paper pattern is placed in a tall vertical orientation, 8.5 inches across by 22 inches tall. You can anchor the paper pattern using pins, or you can just use some heavy objects. Carefully trace your two pattern pieces using a washable marker or chalk or if your fabric has a white background, you can also use pencil. If your fabric is really dark, you can either use chalk or you can trace the pattern on the wrong side of the fabric, which is usually lighter. Remove the paper pattern and then carefully cut out the two rectangles. All right, so I've just finished cutting out the two rectangles for my dice bag. But before we start sewing, we need to identify the tops and match them up. So looking at the fabric design, we want to identify the top. And then you want to remember where the tops are located. So what I'm doing is I'm marking them and I'm using two pins side by side so that I just remember two for top. Next, we're going to sandwich the two rectangles together with the right sides of the fabric together and the tops together. And we're going to pin these in place. Before we begin sewing, there are three holes or gaps that we need to mark. The first gap will be the hole through which we'll turn the project right side out later. Along the top, mark out a hole that's 4 inches wide. And this hole needs to be centered, so we'll start by making a mark that is 2 and a quarter inches from the left, and then we'll make a second mark that's 2 and a quarter inches from the right. That gives us a hole right in the center that's 4 inches wide. And if you have really large hands, you can make the hole a little bit wider if you need to. The other two holes that we need to mark are the holes that our drawstrings will go through later. So on both of the long sides, 
we're going to mark out a hole that's one inch wide, but this one is not going to be in the center. So start by making a mark that is 12 inches down from the top, and make a second mark that is 13 inches from the top. And then just do this on the other side as well. Make a mark 12 inches from the top, and a mark 13 inches from the top. And now we have two holes for our drawstrings to go through later. Now that our fabric is all pinned and marked, we're going to sew a straight line down each of the four sides, making sure to skip over the three holes that we just marked. When you're sewing the four sides, it doesn't really matter where you start, as long as you remember to skip over those three gap areas. I'm using a seam allowance of 3 eighths of an inch, but you can do whatever is easiest for you. After sewing the sides, it's time to adjust the corners of our dice bag to give it that nice flat bottom. So on each corner, we're just going to puff open that corner and then flatten it the opposite direction. And then just insert a pin to hold it in place temporarily. Next, we're going to measure one and a half inches from the tip, and we're just going to draw a line there to stitch on. Now sew directly on the line, straight across. Remove the pin, trim the excess fabric off the corner, and then repeat with the other three corners. After sewing the corners, you should have a nice flat bottom on both ends of the dice bag. Now that that's finished, it is time to reach inside the hole and turn the dice bag right side out. Go ahead and reach in, pull it through, and then stick your fingers into the corners to really poke each of the corners all the way out. After we've turned the dice bag right side out, we no longer need this 4 inch hole, so we're going to stitch it shut. Now I like to use a ladder stitch here, but no one is going to see this part, so you could also fold it flat and do a simple whip stitch. Uh, this is actually going to be the inside bottom of our dice bag, so as long as you make the stitches close enough that none of your dice can pop through, any kind of stitch here is totally fine. If you'd like to look up how to do a ladder stitch, you can find pictures online. Uh, it's a fun stitch to do, but other than that, any kind of stitching is fine here. Now that our dice bag is completely sealed, all we have left are these two drawstring holes. So what I'm going to do is just stick my finger right into the drawstring hole and gather up the top part and we're just going to stuff that part right inside uh, that becomes the lining of our dice bag. Once you have the lining stuffed in, you want to get the bottoms nice and lined up with each other, so you might need to do a little sock puppet maneuver to straighten them out, and once you have them matched up, just insert a little pin in the bottom to keep the corners together temporarily. Once you have the lining inserted and straightened out, just briefly iron the top crease so that it's nice and crisp. And now all that's left is to make the casings to hold our drawstrings. So what we need to do is make two rows of stitches around the dice bag, one that goes around at the tops of the drawstring holes, and one that goes around at the bottoms of our drawstring holes. Just use a pencil or chalk to mark out the two stitching lines all the way around the dice bag. Then just sew all the way around those two lines, and don't forget to take the pins out of the bottom when you're done. The final step is inserting the drawstrings. Using the safety pin, insert one drawstring into the drawstring hole and take it all the way around the bag 
and it'll come back out the same hole that it went in from. Go ahead and tie those off, and then repeat with the second drawstring going in the other hole and coming back out where it started from, and then tie that one off. Then you're done. Well, that does it for our DIY dice bag. I guess I'm gonna have to get some more dice. To learn more about different kinds of stitches, I'll put some links in the video description. If you try it yourself or if you have any questions about the project, feel free to let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more gaming related content like this, hit that subscribe button. Thanks and see you next time.